Uh, we are in Cassiopeia, Berlin with Ulcerate. Uh, for beginning, how has year 2017 been for Ulcerate? Uh, yeah, so far so good. So um, I guess we started, it's, it's, it's just been touring, um, touring shrines, which we released uh, end of last year. Um, yeah, so we did we did Australia for a couple of dates uh, earlier this year in February. It was with um, Marduk, Gorguts and Magla. Great, great couple of shows. And then, um, yeah, and then in August we, we came to Europe and we did Brutal Assault and Metal Mean Festival in Belgium. Um, and then we also did a bunch of Scandinavian shows as well, uh, including Iceland. Great. And uh, yeah, and so now we're just we're just doing sort of like a part two of that of that uh, excursion. Uh, yeah, yeah, you started touring Europe again uh, a couple of days ago. How has the tour started off, and uh, what are your expe expectations for the rest of the tour? Sure. So uh, yeah, I mean the the last two shows are two Polish shows, which were great, perfect, perfect shows. So um, every time we've played Poland has been has been great and uh, I think it was six years ago that we we played Poland last so uh, fucking awesome to, to get back there um, expectations we don't really have expectations it's kind of like we we just want to play for people that want to see us that's kind of it you know um, uh, it's yeah I mean it, it, it really doesn't matter to us if shows are big or small or, or in between um, it's it's just for us to present the music in in the best possible light that we can. Uh, and, uh, hopefully the the shows you know hopefully we perform well and all that sort of stuff. Um, but and, and it's and it's also nice for us to from being you know, we're from the other side of the planet. So it's it's still humbling to to travel you know halfway around the globe and uh, and uh, people care you know so yeah. Yeah. So now we know that you guys tour a lot. So, how important are live performances for you? We yeah, I get well. We tour as as much as we can. We've all got professions, you know, um, careers outside of the band. So, uh, and and we obviously don't want to lose our jobs. So we we we, we fit it, the band around our uh, work schedules and whatnot. Which is, if we're in a perfect world, we would tour more. But we also want to have balance, you know. So. Um, but in terms of live performance, I mean, it's it's super important for us. Um, always has been. I, I feel that we we do our kind of our best work in that arena, um, and this is kind of what music's all about. You know, it's like the 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 connection with uh, uh, people on a on a first hand basis. You know, um, and and it's also. I don't know. There's just it's it's the most kind of purest form of the of the art form, you know. Uh, you you can't fake playing live, you know. And and in this day and age, particularly with metal, you know, there's so much kind of studio trickery and stuff going on. That I think uh, playing live is where uh, the charlatans get uh, found out, you know. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, regarding your music, uh, people have been trying to pinpoint your style of metal for a long time. But uh, how would you describe your music in your own words? At, at this point, I, I I don't even try because uh, it's it just it is what it is, and I just it, I, I I hate this question. It gets asked a lot. You know what what, what do you guys describe yourselves as? I don't know. It's it's death metal to us. I, I know that there's a lot more to it than that, but that's the the the, the foundation genre. You know. Um, I don't know. It's that's for other people to decide. Um, it, it hopefully, just it just sounds like us, you know. At, at this point, um, yeah. Uh, without the uh, genre limitations, what kind of adjectives would you use for your music, and uh, where do you draw inspiration? Because it's so unique. Uh, it's okay. So, in terms of adjectives, I don't know. Oppressive is one that seems to work. Um, obviously. <laughs> You know, baseline terms like dark, uh, uh, you know, aggressive, etc. Um, but there's a lot more to it than that. Um, there's, a, I mean, there's, there's a, we've always, whether or not the, the 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 piece of music that we're writing is is atmospheric, there should always be some underlying, underpinning atmosphere throughout the song. Um, 
that doesn't that that and that does that doesn't mean like uh, you know atmosphere uh, washy atmospheric sort of sections. It just means there has to be a cohesive kind of whole uh, to the to the piece. Um, yeah, I mean. Uh, yeah, I don't know. And uh, in, in terms of inspiration, uh, there's inspiration everywhere, you know. Um, we listen to, I mean, collectively, we listen to lots of different styles of music. Um, and you, I, th I think f for, for Ulcerate as a whole, uh, when, it, when it comes to com composing our own stuff, at this point, it's, it's, we have such a clear, what well, we have for years, have, we've had a very clear direction of where we want to take the band and it's just a matter of going, sitting down before we start an album and, and saying, okay, well, what way do we want to go at this time? Um, so in terms of like inspiration and influence at, at this point, it, that doesn't really come into it. You know, it's more of a, a personal playing thing. So I can tell you with drumming, like uh, I, have, I have many influences and inspiration that, that sit outside of metal. So mo like a lot of my favorite drummers are guys like Chris Coleman, Dave Weckl, um, Benny Greb, Jojo Mayer, but they, those guys have nothing to do with with what we're playing uh, sonically per se. But I think perhaps their influence in my playing is, is evident. So it's then and then it's kind of it's taking all those individual influences and then kind of just forging ahead with what it is that we do. So I, yeah, I'm not sure if that really answers the question, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll keep here drilling <laughs> still. Uh, well, many people uh, associate your music with uh, maybe nightmares. And many people have actually said that uh, the feeling, which is of course positive in, the, in uh, their and our view, is a fear when they listen to your music. Do you feel like you accomplished uh, what you are uh, trying to do with your music when people say things like this? Yeah, abs I mean, absolutely. Um, uh, I, I, the, the sound that we kind of want to create in our head is, is like the, the sound of the earth kind of ending, <laughs> end of the world kind of scenario. Um, and yeah, that's, that's hugely positive, you know. Uh, yeah, that's the whole reason that we got, I think everybody that, that got into this style of music, the first thing you, that you gravitate to is just the, the intensity of it, the, the over, how it overwhelms you, you know. And, and overwhelming is definitely, I guess, an adjective like we were talking about before that um, I, I think you know we hope to achieve. But it, we, you have to be uh, you have to be aware that you don't overwhelm 100% of the time. Otherwise, it's just you're just brick walling. You know, it's like uh, um, so. It's 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 finding contrast and hopefully telling a bit of a story with within each song within in each album. You know, um, and, and that obviously comes together with, with set lists live. You know. It, it has to have peaks and valleys. It can't just be a thousand BPM all the time, you know. Yeah. Uh, your newest album, Shrines of Par Paralysis, uh, was re released uh, last year. Um, the reviews were raving, but how have the fans received the album? Uh, it, it, yeah, it seems to, to go hand in hand with, with the critical response, for the, for the most part. Um, we like to keep some distance from uh, interacting with fans. You know, we don't social media. I, just, I have zero interest in, so we don't we don't have that connection. Like I know a lot of bands have that first hand thing going on, but um, playing shows and everything. It's if from what we what we can tell. This, those songs go down really really well live. So yeah, I'm very happy. Yeah. Okay, after 17 years, counting the blood red years and five albums. Uh, how would you describe the band's journey so far? Uh, I don't know, it's, it's just uh, a logical progression, I guess. It's, it's, it's been, uh, I wouldn't say effortless, but it's been very, very, yeah, very li uh, clear, concise, logical. I, I think if you, if you step through, even from those, yeah, blood wreath, <laughs> uh, early demos right through to the ulcerate demos. I think there's, it's very clear that where we've kind of been going, and um, uh, I, I hope that it, it, we don't, f we're not coming across as stagnating because that's the worst. That's fucking the worst thing uh, that I hate about my favorite bands is five or six albums in, you just they're just doing the same, you know, stock thing. So. Uh, but you also you don't want to reinvent yourself uh, and step outside of the genre, you know. Unless unless you're a band like Olva, where it's that's kind of become their thing, you know. Uh, 
it's a fine line, you know. It's a fine line between ma- maintaining your identity a- and pushing the boundaries, but kind of within the the confines of of the parameters that you you set up. So uh, we're very aware of this, and we do our best, basically. At the, and uh, at the end of the day, we want to satisfy us ourselves. You know, we want to make the the death metal that, that we've always wanted to hear. You know, so yeah. Thank you very much. I'm very glad tonight. Yeah. Cheers. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it.